Cancer, we are in a last quarter moon phase and the moon is wondering where are we having troubles? What are some things that we need to let go? Where are some areas that you're needing to exercise forgiveness and maybe do some emotional or some physical decluttering that maybe is gonna, that is needing to happen? So stick around to find out a little some deep stuff here, but there's a lot of gifts that can come with this energy, Cancer. Stick around to find out what those little treasures are. But before we get into that, for those of you who are returning... Welcome back, Soul Tribe. I appreciate your subscriptions, your likes, and shares. Your support really is just the greatest cancer, and it keeps us growing. And for those of you who are new, welcome to the Chariot and Friends. Justin here, and I'm happy Higher Stuff has brought you here. We're in for an amazing journey. Now, the purpose of this channel, for those of you who have cancer in your placement, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Saturn, Uranus, wherever cancer, this one's for you. And I do tarot cards for the base of our brother here, the good old moon. And I'll talk about what sign she's in, what phase she's in, when she's going to avoid, of course, it's all of those lunar shenanigans. And just so you're all aware, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one, -one, so take what resonates with you, leave the rest with me, never force a reading on the situation, and everything will be dope, cancer. Now. Let's jump into it. <laughs> Feeling pumped, Cancer. <laughs> and your space has been cleansed. Crystals. Feeling lovely. Just great energy all around it, Cancer. And Cancer, happy Mercury Day. Mercury is associated and happy at the start of the new month here. We're officially into May. But Mercury Day is great, can be great for communication cancer, especially now that Mercury's gone direct in Aries. This can be where this can be a great time for doing some studying, doing some learning, you know, taking that idea that you had and really kind of expanding on that, getting some more, getting some more knowledge. This can be, again, with the communication, exchanging different ideas. I feel like this can even be a very great time to get people kind of motivated here, not necessarily in a rush type of energy, but it's a, it's more so of a... What am I? It, it, it feels like this is like helping others get into that, that hopeful type of energy, getting into that celebration that, you know, Mars is freshly into this, into their home sign. Venus is in their home sign. The energies I feel are very, very supportive right now. So this can be a very motivating energy, I feel, when we're working with Mercury days. And this is something, too, if you happen to. And this is not medical advice or anything, but if you happen to work with different herbs and doing different like tinctures or maybe different salves or working with just different type of herbs, seeing what planets these herbs are associated with can maybe help see how these play around with that, you know, and see how these energies could affect how... Your, your plants, because I mean, of course, if the planets are affecting us, they're affecting the nature as well. And I'll tell you what, Venus energy is at like, a, she, her energy is like through the roof right now. So this could be a great time of working with Venus herbs. And, you know, just even thinking too, when you're harvesting, you're working with them, when the planets are at their strongest or in, the, in that stri strengthening energy, that helps the, supports that plant growth as well. So that's something to kind of just think about a little, since we're in Mercury Day, kind of exchanging information, little drop a little tidbits. Hope you appreciate these nuggets because I was thinking about that the other day I have like my real kind of like foot in the door to even just like spirituality and things was through herbology and getting into that and making different teas I always loved watching when I would make an infusion just watching how like it's like alchemy when you're seeing the water change compositions I would just think like when I'm sitting something overnight like you're gonna be totally something totally different when I wake up and that's something about that was just always really exciting so hopefully you enjoy these little, little tidbits I think I'm gonna start working in little nuggets and little things like that so but also cancer we are in the last quarter moon phase in Aquarius and this now this is one of the major like the ones that you'll still kind of see on the calendar when we're talking about the new moon first quarter full moon and then the last quarter this is one of those last that that's final big bigger main square it's the close you know it's the waning square of this energy and this happened at 4 27 a.m and that would be at the pacific time and it was where the sun was at 11 degrees 34 minutes of taurus and it was squaring the moon at 11 degrees of 34 minutes of aquarius 
Now, when you think about these aspects in the relationships with these the planets, is because the the aspects is all about integration, and you want to think about the relationship between the two planets. And depending on who you ask, I've, I I personally like I, I, what resonates for me when I think about the the terms of like when you think about it maybe in terms of like hard and soft planets the soft planets would be like the moon our lovely guardian venus jupiter and neptune and the harder planets would be like mars saturn pluto and uranus and mercury falls somewhere in the middle mercury just kind of takes on whatever energy they happen to be forming the conversation with and i like to think the sun i've seen where people will put the sun more in the harder aspects but i think the sun falls in the middle too for for me because i feel that the sun just brings emphasis on what's ever going now going on and with it forming this this tension with the moon i feel that this could be for some where it's letting go maybe of the needs. I feel like there could be, oh, interesting. Absolutely, I like that, Cancer. Think of yourself, we'll talk about that in a moment. But I could I could feel see this for some as a letting go of the idea of maybe needing to please others, for example, because I feel the moon in Aquarius can be a very friendly moon, but sometimes the shadow sides of Aquarius can, one, in one aspect, lose itself in the group, you know, lose itself to the sense of, to the collective and not and not bring that kind of go with the herd and go with not wanting to rock the boat because Aquarius is rebellious but not in in the in the idea of just like we're shaking up the system it's that urge to be your unique self because in that then that raises the collective you know when you're bringing your individuality but when we're all in that sort of like that herd mentality then no there's no uniqueness that is brewing and I feel that there's this what's being released or what's being letting go, what, or maybe what's having hard or having a hard time letting go is those, or maybe are those maybe sort of like societal sort of aspects that have been put on us. You know, maybe this is thinking about your relationship with, it could be a number of things, you know, with when we're talking about Taurus, this could be with money. This could be what you what you value personally. This could be where you may have you may think about where you may have shrunk yourself or done something for the sake of maybe security. Just thinking about the Taurus energy as well, where you felt it was safe to maybe be, stay in that job. Because, again, the fixed signs, the fixed energies can be hard to adjust to some stuff you know they they can be where they when they're locked into a thing there's a need there's something that i feel like it's not that they can't change but i feel that it's a bit harder you know i've taken i like to think i'm for myself i'm i'm not I can be pretty flexible, but for there are times where I can be very stubborn, and I have a lot of fixed energy in my chart. I have like seven or eight pl in planet between the points and planets. I have like seven things in fixed energy, so you know I know where I can be a little rigid, and that's something that I am. That I it's it is a constant battle because there's it's a world of extremes when you're getting with with fixed signs sometimes it's either this it, it can it can be very black or white and so that's it that's can be something where we can maybe get i could see that as another energy that could come up for the collective as well or even individually depending on where this is happening in your chart where maybe there's this letting go of that need for an extreme mentality that where you can still have your beliefs, but not feel like you have to force your values on others, where we can still co-create, but have this level of respect for each other's values as well. I feel like that's another way that this energy could potentially come up or invite you to just see how you're maybe doing that with the people that you're doing. Because when this is happening too, some things, some other aspects that are kind of, there's a little celestial kind of chit chat that's going on. Venus is forming a square with Pluto at two degrees. She's in Taurus and Pluto's in Aquarius. So it's very interesting, too, that this that this energy is kind of happening here. And with Pluto in Venus ha having that that sort of that that square tension there, there could be, you know, tension again in relationships. You know, there are some transformations, I feel, 
individually and collectively. You know, we're having these deeper conversations. I was just actually talking with with a couple of friends the other day, and we were just talking about some just how things are run be, 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 from how. <sighs> You know, just where, where the conversation's at right now, from the housing to, we were talking about even where we're talking about herbs and different kind of things. I was talking about di different, all the dandelions that are growing around. And like, it's like, I, I have all these dandelions that are growing outside my place. And I would love to go out there and just kind of forage that stuff and work because dandelions have like all these high minerals and things. But with, I was with this, I just moved into this place and I was like, I was asking my partner, I was like, do you know if they put like the chemicals down or because you got to be mindful of those types of things when you're dealing working with herbs around like cities or in parks if they're putting down chemicals working with you know considering animals are going around there you know it's just so you got to be it's and it's just like just thinking about just the the state of those things you know like I feel like this square can be where there's collective values that are changing as well like things are I feel like things that were maybe kind of hush hush are starting to maybe kind of bubble up a little bit more because I'm noticing that the conversations are changing and it's it's I do feel like it's it's gone from where it's like it used to be just kind of a casual ha 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 to like it's said and it's just like yeah like that is a little effed up can we talk let's go into that a little bit more you know and that so it could spark this conversation there could be even not necessarily challenges with in with one another but it could just be where again this this pushback of a societal type of thing because that's what this pluto and aquarius is bringing up and pluto's about getting ready to go retrograde uh, depending on when you're watching this tomorrow so there's going to be some i feel some interesting things that are going to be kind of coming up internally as things kind of go on that I feel are going to motivate towards a different future, hopefully a grander future with how I feel the energies in May are going to be because we have some nice stuff, especially Big Papa is going to be very, really busy. So towards the end of the month, so that's going to be really nice. So but then also the last couple things with this energy, one thing I wanted to talk about, too, is Mars in this because Mars is in a really interesting spot during this last quarter moon is Mars is right in between Pluto and Neptune as far as this he's he's leaving out of a conjunction with Neptune and forming a sextile with with Pluto who is his higher octave and so and when you think of Mars, Mars is our energy, our drive, our passion, you know, how we how we get the energy flowing. And I like that we're going to be talking about that with your with your general energy. But with him, I feel like being exactly between the, the two most outer planets in our our solar system, I feel that there is this sort of. Especially because Mars is at zero degrees when this is happening. Mer and Neptune, Mercury. Neptune's at 28 and Pluto's at two. So again, he's exactly in the middle between these two and having this kind of, he's finished up a conversation, Neptune starting one with Pluto. And I feel that this could be a very supportive action. You know, it's like, Yes, the, the the with Mars and Neptune, there's I feel like that that there's something intuitive that was being integrated that is is being understood with that Mars sextiling Pluto is how I feel this is kind of what was maybe confusing at first is starting to make some sort of sense in why we may need to do this letting go, this reflection in this third quarter phase, why there's these changes that are needing to be had, maybe even why some changes. This could be even, I feel like, some realizations if you've had some, maybe some splits in the past or noticed that maybe you had to leave some groups possibly. Maybe you've been, maybe this is even going through your social media, for example, and seeing are the things that are popping up in your feed and stuff, how are they supporting you now? I was, I just actually did a, you know, play around with the algorithm. I was just messing around with my stuff and I was seeing a lot of like nostalgic things, which was really nice, but it's like, there's not really providing me any sort of value. So I started, I, I started getting more herbology feeds and my stuff and more astrology things, just kind of switching that over, kind of seeing whose posts were kind of coming through, how they were resonating. I'm like, I think I'm good on seeing that type of stuff. So it can 
can be a kind of a purge like that as well. The waning phases, again, are it's a decluttering type of phase. You know, we're processing everything and we're integrating these all this eclipse energy that's from this this phase that has happened and we're we're wrapping up we have like maybe a few more days or about about what about six more days before we get into this newer lunar cycle here so this is a time to i feel show yourself some forgiveness some gratitude and appreciate the growth that has happened for you there cancer and, and what and just again kind of reflecting on maybe seeing a situation from a different lens, you know, kind of reflecting back on something and seeing it for the gift that maybe it was a blessing in disguise that it may have been. And if this is something, Cancer, that you want to look a little bit more thoroughly into your chart, see how these energies and where they may be translating in your chart, book a reading with me. I have links down in the description box below and also on my Instagram page as well. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Instagram. But I do chart reading it for anything from natal chart readings to your solar return readings, which are talking about how your energies are working for the year. And even a fun thing, Cancer, you can kind of play around with your location. That changes up where the houses are at, where the focus can be. And it gives you this sense of control and gives you shows you that you can. Astrology is not meant to be this thing that puts something on you. It gives you these, these if anything, it provides options. It shows things that you're walking around. Like, for example, my where my solar return was the nice thing that it always falls in the same sign it's going to be where the sun is conjunct your natal sun so that always be the same it always be for me the sun will be in cancer but instead of being in the 12th house like it normally is for me this it was in the third house this year so this was a year for me of heightened communication a lot of learning and i did a lot of learning and this was my immediate environment when you think about the third house my immediate environment has changed quite a bit and it's, it's changed yet a number of times. And so it was a lot. This was a big year of education where the moon's at shows where you find changes. I've had a lot of changes in my friends group because the moon is in the 11th house. And it's been where I've had to... It's been it's been an interesting interesting year for sure, and I've been in a Taurus rising, so that's been a fun to kind of translate that lens to come from this place of to come with a more sort of grounded approach to work on my sense of value and yeah, it's it's been really neat, and then so that's one way you another way you can work with your energy. I'm actually I'm getting I, my birthdays coming up. I mean, all of our birthdays are getting ready to come up. So if you have your son in 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 Cancer, and so I'm even thinking about like where do I want to be when I and I think I I think I'm gonna be pretty much be in Seattle because I, I kind of like where the, the my charts looking like my son my son's in the twelfth house, so it's like I, that's a familiar territory, but it's gonna be where I'm a Cancer rising. So that's I'm kind of kind of excited about that. Really kind of sync up with the moon and energy this year so I think that's what's going to be happening so and see it just gives you something it gives you an energy something to look forward to it gives you something to anticipate as opposed to like oh it's just another year just another day or another exciting you know gives you we can plan stuff out and even going into like the lunar returns where we're looking into how the emotional landscape is looking for you for the month my moon was actually in the second house Taurus energy so this has been one where I have I've had to I've had to work on my self worth quite a bit. This was a very emotional month, and it required a lot of me. A lot of the planets, and this would have been for all of us, you know, where this high stellium energy you had a lot of planets in the first house and a lot of planets in the twelfth house, and so it it has been a lot of letting go, a lot of reestablishing relationships. It's been a whole thing, but. Again, it gives me something to look at at hindsight. And so hopefully it would provide the same sort of value for you to approach astrology and make it more practical, make it a more kind of personal language. I like to think of it as like it's you and higher, your higher self exchanging notes. You know, it's, it's really exciting. So if that's something that resonates with you, definitely check that out there, Cancer. And also down in the description box, there's a reader, Jamie. She, she's fantastic. The, the ears of understanding and the lips of wisdom are her channels. And she has a Cancer exclusive exclusive channel does really great work from books clubs and has been very supportive to myself and other readers and nonprofit organizations and things so definitely check her out someone to to just a, a really really great energy so we actually did a live together not too long ago that was a lot of fun and so but definitely check all that stuff out there cancer but let's go ahead and get into your general energy of the day cancer i like this because you got the meandering pathway here which is a card of flow and i'm with that cancer because i do feel when you're thinking about Uranus energy, 
You know, that is bringing the things that get you in the flow to the collective. You know, like some things when I'm when I'm doing like the tarot and astrology and thing, that's when I'm in the flow. That thing of when hours can pass by and it's just like, oh, it's just been just rich experience. I love when I'm writing music. So that's been something that I'm even thinking been considering to, you know, like it's a lot of, well, I'm a thing, you know, I'm, it's, it's, it's one of those energies where I feel it's, I feel like it's like, when was the last time that you've allowed yourself that, that energy to flow, to really just kind of be who you are and whatever that embodies, you know, and not by, by what, what people, not what you turn on for the people. And I don't mean this in a, you know, like, are you the, are you the lawyer who likes to draw? Are you the drawer who likes to study law? Are, are you the person who loves to, maybe you're like doing some juggling on the side or, I mean, you know, whatever this may look like their cancer. I feel like this, this last quarter is letting go of things that aren't in the flow of you. You know, just even thinking with like that Venus squared Pluto, that I feel is, Pluto shows us things that it brings up, things to the surface and they may not always be desirable things but they're, they're pluto brings up stuff like hey this has been controlling you under the scenes here how and this has been messing with your flow what's in with venus now what's your relationship with this thing we need to figure out how we can get this energy to flow in a more constructive way and that can be something too cancer you know i feel that with our you know how we are signed depending on where you have cancer if you where your cancer placements are at this can be where you're seeing how the flow of the cycles even if you happen to have like a particularly tough maybe cycle because i'll tell you what like with this full moon that happened in scorpio this whole thing that was going on this there was a lot of energy that was going on in my chart that was that was it was just asking a lot of me <laughs> and it's in that toughness though like i it's it it realized it it showed me where i was getting out of the flow and so i got back in the flow i gave i had i've been drinking my teas but i hadn't been really been very intentional with it like i normally was so that was something that i've been integrating back into working that into my even now coupling it with the astrology that new relationship is forming something nice and again i'm, I'm going to be forming so i've even got a there's this comment that i'm keeping an eye on and how i want to kind of start incorporating that in there as well kind of introducing some more kind of holistic ways to kind of work with these with these energies too because i'm a big fan of like preventative maintenance it's anything that's about making this body run better i'm with and like and i'm not just again i'm talking about from like a natural standpoint you know getting when we're talking about grounding or we're talking about being able to work with like dandelions going out in the field and, and go knowing where to go to pick these things and when to go to work with these energies when's an optimal time and how do we form that that give and reciprocity with the with the energy so you know, I just feel like this 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 meandering path here. I feel like there's this the where the energies are kind of going is is taking those 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 lessons and then again it's like finding a new type of flow, seeing the new pathways that have opened up for you with this path and like and then trusting this intuitive guy. Let me, let me get some tarot on this cancer. Get some details with this. Look at yourself. Let's see what's going on here. All right, Cancer. So you have the Princess of Swords, the Knight of Swords, the Seven of Wands, and then the Eight of Cups here, Cancer. You know, with this Eight of Cups, this is Saturn and Pisces, and it seems we got Saturn here. This the Eight of Cups. I feel like there's this. There's something here when we're talking about this letting go energy. I feel this is very appropriate. It's the When I think about that relationship of Saturn and Pisces, there could be something where we're needing to let something go when we're getting with, when we're dealing with Pisces energy and like 12th house energy. But I feel like there's this for some, this could have been, this could be where maybe we were hoping a certain path maybe were, was opening up. 
you have I feel like there were a lot of ideas maybe like where things were made where we had planned on going what we were going to plan on doing how this was going to execute or how this was going to come to manifest but I feel like there's there's something here with the seven of wands this could be like some like a I don't know if this is, could be like the internal dialogue when we get in that place of self-doubt, when we hit that first roadblock or when we hit multiple roadblocks. Because the Seven of Wands can be this card of criticisms, you know, can be... I like to talk about this card. The Six of Wands is right behind this card. You know, if you remove this main stick and it looks just like the... Other than just like this added stick, it, it looks like the Six of Wands in this deck, which is a card of victory. And I like to think that with this card, it's how this crude stick could be either someone else's opinions or I feel like the criticisms that we take on ourselves, that internal enemy, that 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 hidden enemy that can come up when you're talking about, like I'm thinking about Pisces and Saturn and Pisces. And I feel like there's something here that's messing with your flow. Maybe this is like low self-esteem. Maybe this could be, this feels mental just with these, with the, 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 the princess and the knight of swords because this is the princess is the page and the knight is the king of swords and i feel that there's there's a certain mentality or maybe a certain idea like maybe you think you can't do something maybe because of whatever the idea is maybe maybe we're thinking because of resources maybe we're thinking because of this maybe we're thinking because of that the the thing with the problems at hand cancer i feel like that can come up is that they give you something to work with it's like because it's like the it's worse i feel like if you don't know what's messing with the flow but when you have an idea of what's going on, it's that I feel it's that that the Knight of Swords is that taking action. It's letting go of the the idea, the maybe the notion that you're powerless, or because Pisces has a powerful imagination, and so does Cancerian energy, and. I feel like this could be where, you know, just when you get could get in those, maybe those self-deprecating places, or maybe you have a certain person that triggers a certain response out of you. You know, you have this idea, but then when you share this, they tend to bring it down, or maybe you're, you're whatever, whatever this may, whatever this may be. But I feel like there's, there's something here. And I feel it's very appropriate with all the Taurus energy that we're kind of getting into right now. But I feel like there's a certain idea of maybe what you're worth, Cancer, or maybe what you think a certain idea may be worth or something here that's like it's if you were to allow yourself to get into the flow, like whatever this is that we're letting go, maybe this is a, a let me get a little bit more with this eight of cups here, Cancer, before we before we move on with this. Because I almost even feel, too, that there may be this fear of even starting up something. The Eight of Cups in this deck can be a card of indolence. And it's like maybe we're having troubles. We have these ideas, but maybe you don't think you... I'm not sure here with this with this, with this this So let me get a little bit more on this, this Eight of Cups here. Let me see if that can help that make more sense. Interesting. Thank you, yourself. All right, so... Yeah, so the Eight of Cups is clarified by the Five of Wands and the Eight of Swords in reverse. And then you have the Six of Cups upright here. And that's interesting, you know, the Six of Cups can be this card of the past. And I feel like there's, it's almost like this taking a past situation and not letting it be something that limits you, but something that is that liberates you you know let it be where you may have made a mistake or maybe there was something that you know maybe we've been feeling like whatever this fear may be or just wherever because the eight of swords is like we're, we're we're unchaining ourselves but I feel that in order to get to this flow there's something uncomfortable that's maybe needing to be faced here something that
it's like it's something that in the moment it, it feels like it's it's just like it's a lot of work or something here that's like you can't seem to solve the problem because the, the five of wands is this card of brainstorming here and if you're having some kind of troubles here too i feel the six of cups there's this this energy of sharing these fears you know there's this And that might even be something too, I feel could maybe even come up just even going back to where this last quarter moon is with the moon squaring the sun. This could be where maybe the moon is, because Aquarius can be not necessarily detached, but I feel has a very healthy boundary when it comes to the group. But I do feel like maybe there's this need to kind of crowdsource a little bit. Maybe we're sharing our problems in like a, a, a blog, maybe anonymously or something along those. I'm not, you know, however this may work, but... It's something I feel like is wanting to get into the flow, is wanting to move here, Cancer. But I feel it's allowing this the, this this energy to flow. Hmm. Let's let's get some more on this, Cancer. And I feel the Seven of Wands too. You know, if you have ideas, I feel like it's making sure to protect that flow. You know, to. Let's see, let me get some more on this cancer. Thank you, yourself. Oh, I love it, cancer. So you have the Seven of Swords, the Moon in Aquarius, the Prince of Cups, the Death card, Scorpio energy, and then the Ace of Pentacles here. And that's interesting, cancer. With the Prince of Cups, the Prince of Cups is, he's a very, very passionate knight. He's the, the princes are the knights in this deck. And he is one that follows his heart. You know, this for me, he's very Scorpio. And the fact that you have the death card here as well, I feel that there's this, I feel there's something here, Cancer, especially with the Ace of Discs. Because if you're wanting to start up something and then and, and when i say start up something this doesn't just mean like a project or like a business this could be maybe you're starting a new routine maybe you're just wanting to start up you know change the flow maybe you're wanting to do more maybe making more time for some relaxation or for some more rest or maybe you're making more time to move the body maybe making more time to eat b different foods you know be more mindful with what how your body re responds to certain things or maybe this is changing changing the flow of how you're coming into relationships with the death card but there's i feel like there is something here that getting in the flow of where your intuition i feel like is telling you can really bring about some really i feel some if there's a trust here that i feel that is coming with the seven of swords because this can be it's it can be a card of deception sure but i feel like this the 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 seven of swords is is coming up as this it's a it's an energy of finding different an alternative method you know different going out of something a different way you know in the rider white deck there's this person that's carrying these swords that are trying to remove them so that they could, to prevent this war, to find a different way. You know, the moon in Aquarius is one of peace, is the humanitarian. And I feel what could happen here, you know, just when, because when I feel you get in the flow, what I feel is really inspiring about Aquarius is that Aquarius energy reminds us the beauty of being your unique self, of not worrying about what other people think you know and not feeling that big like that feeling that judgment but just allowing your energies to flow in again you got we're always going to make mistakes and you know it's not i feel like it's not being disrespectful or anything along those lines but it is being authentic you know and i feel like there's just a lot of abundance that can come through here the potential with this ace of this for something to materialize in a really cool type of way that can just change the flow but i feel like it's something that you have to have to trust cancer that you're that's something i feel where you may need to dig a little deeper when we're talking about like scorpio energy 
and to find the truth behind something here because i feel the seven of swords here too that it, if something is coming back to where maybe we're telling ourselves that we can't do something or maybe someone has told us that we're, we can't do something or maybe it could be maybe we bought into the what what society says that we can or cannot do or what we you know like whatever this however big or small this may be be manifesting here i do feel like something is changing you're getting into yeah, a different sense of who you are. And I feel like that five of wands where there's almost a resistance, I even feel maybe that's coming through with that. Like, because we're thinking with the eight of cups being the card of indolence again. There could be this end, there, or this resistance because we want things to, hmm. Because I feel like it's just like maybe you want things to be comfortable. It's almost easier to stay in the fantasy. But then that Saturn in, in Pisces, it's just like, it, I feel like it's making, it's it's almost making us kind of see the illusion. You know, like it's, Saturn's not necessarily, he wants us to be imaginative, creative. But I feel like he doesn't want us to be where we're asleep. You know, where we're just making empty dreams and setting ourselves up to fail. Saturn, just thinking about Saturn and Pisces and just Saturn in general, since Saturn's here. Saturn is not one that he wants to, he's a planet of accomplishment, of achievement. He wants us to change and pureness wants us to evolve and to, but it's there's a discipline that comes with achievement you know this is something that we have to take action something we have to get into the flow of who we really are here so it's very interesting but let's get some advice from saturn and uranus and that's actually <laughs> Fascinating cancer. So I, I may have mentioned I, I some I rolled at least select these dice over here. There, one's got planets, the others has sign, and then the last has the house numbers. And I roll them every day just to kind of meditate on whatever energies come up. And the one that came up today actually was Uranus energy. Uranus in Scorpio. Uranus in Scorpio in the in the tenth house. And you know I was saw was reading somewhere where, and I and I I, I agree with this. Uranus being exalted in in Scorpio, which means he does very well in Scorpio. Because Scorpio does one that it's it's very truthful to who they are, to their emotions, to what it wants, what it what it, what its passions are, and will be authentic in that. You know, the 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 love that you hmm yeah this is it's it's oh cancer. I love this. So let's 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 talk about this. So your last cards here, Cancer. So you have the six of swords, the Hermit card, Virgo energy, and then the Sun card, Sun energy. <laughs> Let's switch back over. <laughs> but you know, with the you know, Cancer, when we're in the flow, I feel that's when we are ha happiest, when we are shining bright. And I feel like it's, I feel like it takes time to get into that flow. There, there are things that we have to let go there are things like the six of swords is you got i feel like you got a lot of energies of moving towards new directions with the death card the six there's this the six of cups i feel even the eight of cups there's, there's this this movement towards something new we're in this sort of like with the hermit this is being in that kind of a deep reflective state you see the one of my favorite combinations to do with this in this deck is the sun and the hermit because you see, there's the sun that's in here. This is reflecting on what brings you light, what brings you into the flow. And when you find that thing, cancer, look at the sun rising here. Isn't that lovely? That was like one of my first things. That was one of my favorite things to do when I was start, first started this channel. And yeah, this, this energy, I feel, is... Especially that I like that this showed up in the last quarter phase too. It's like, what do we need to let go? Where do we maybe need to forgive ourselves for maybe how if we, let's say, for example, if you had maybe maybe you're in a place where you had put off something for a while and you, you're thinking like, oh, my gosh, I'm starting this so late in life. I've wasted so much time. And it's like, no, you went through the experiences that you needed to because there are times where I was like, man, I would have loved to have had all this stuff like years ago. But then I may not have had the experience to where would I have been working from it with, you know, and of course, there would have been challenges and things, of course, but 
it's gone how it's needed to in order to get me into the flow. I had to get kind of out of the flow to see when I'm in the flow or you know, to get in the flow. But now I know when I'm out of the flow too. There's it's a beauty with this with this where I feel this energy can kind of teach you and I feel like it's it's really kind of it's just asking to just you know not necessarily you know this is even bigger with t bigger than tuning into the stars to the things you know and this is not looking for something outside of yourself this is looking within what do you what do you need to feel in the flow you know what do you you have all the answers in here you know that's it all starts within and then it manifests outwards so this is something I feel like to to think about cancer I like this, you know, sun shining some light. And I feel like there's some maybe if you've been, not been sure where things are going, I feel that something could be revealed with this. You know, there's something because I love that the sun and Scorpio is here because the six of cups is the sun and Scorpio. So I feel like when 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 synchronicities kind of line up like that, I feel there is a big emphasis on that. Like some truths are going to be revealed. Some. And it maybe it may be always with Scorpio there might be a little what may come up may not always be the most favorable things but they are the most empowering things because even looking back over this cycle where it was there were intense spells it brought about up so many things that I for I had actually I personally had set out out just just had forgot to get in the practice of so now I remembered and now we're now we're in salad so but yeah Cancer I think I'm gonna leave that there. Well, if you like that cancer, if you resonated with you, give it a thumbs up. And share this cancer, because, you know, it can be hard to get in the flow sometimes. Life can get busy. You know, you got this, you got that, you got the third. So, you know, it's however you can do, like, little things. You know, I feel like this is like, it starts small, and then it just, it gradually compounds and gets bigger as you, as you integrate these things, you know, cancer. And then hit that bell button, you son. If you then subscribe, you get notified when I release videos each day. And then, last thing, Cancer, after you get done checking your chart, which if you want to book a reading with me, get more in the flow of your energy, check that information down in the description box below. And also, on, it's on my bio page on Instagram as well there, Cancer. And then feel free to ask me if you have any questions or anything, message, if you DM the question, DM readings or... And then, after that, Cancer, come over to my other channel, Alchemist Date. Where I do, I do this thing. I'm, I think I'm calling the celestial chit chat. I think that's where we're, we're going with that one. But I talk about the aspects that are happening. It's, a, it's almost like the celestial forecast each week. And I'm also going to start doing some chart analysis here soon. I'm going to start doing that. I think I'm going to start doing that as like a my a live event. So I'm getting the days that I'm going to, or the day that I'm going to start doing that. I think that's going to be a weekly thing. So. Stay tuned for that. I'll be making more announcements as about that as things move forward there, Cancer. And all that housekeeping is down in the description box below. But let me get you surprise cards here, Cancer. So I can get you out of here. You got the Ten of Wands, Cancer. And I feel like this... And I, I feel like this is very appropriate. What are the things that are keeping you, what are burdening you, Cancer, that are keeping you out of the flow. You know, the Ten of Wands is a card of oppression. It's Saturn and Sagittarius. What's restricting your growth? Where do you need to be more disciplined in order to expand yourself? You know, where do you need to, you know, how do we alleviate? And I feel that's where this this Five of Wands is interesting because it's more Saturn energy. That's Saturn and Leo. And the Five of Wands, I feel like with that having popped up as a clarifier in reverse it's just like maybe the the what saturn may be asking might feel like a lot more it i feel like it's always with saturn the initial the initiation is hard when you're getting through it it's like you it's like it's a little it's a little extra discomfort but what's going to happen is a bigger relief you know, because now we're tackling whatever this Ten of Wands is. And I feel like it's, because it, the Five of Wands, it doesn't feel like you don't know what to do. It just feels like maybe the energy isn't there behind it. It's it's the it's like maybe a motivational type of thing, for example. Maybe it's a mental thing. Maybe it's a resource thing. Wherever you feel burdened, it's just like, how can we get things more in the flow? Maybe you, let's let's get your other Oracle card here, Cancer. 
you know, but is this like a relationship that's maybe restricting the flow, you know, or is this your environment that's maybe restricting your flow? And I mean, it's not necessarily maybe that you can't move, but maybe even just like basically sometimes, you know, just going through and doing just some declutter and making some space can bring in just a better flow. But let's think of yourself. Oh, interesting. So you, for your Oracle card here, Cancer, you got the Turtle Spirit here, which is slow and steady wins the race. And I feel like there's been a lot of that. We've been I was just actually talking with someone about this. But, you know, this journey is one, it's, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's, it's, not a, it's not necessarily a sprint. I feel like, you know, sometimes the messaging, you know, in some of our music and things may be that sort of like live, live fast, die young, but really in the flow, it's more so, it, it is, it's, it's, a, it's, you're, you, you know, it's like, a, it's, a, it's like gardening, cancer. You, you know, it's, 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 it starts as a seed, then it sprouts, starts to bear fruit, then parts of that that plant or that energy is let go, is released, dies, metaphorical death, you know, and then new things grow. And then those from those things that have shed away provide new fuel for new things and the cycle starts over again, you know. And I feel that it's allowing yourself that 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 grace in that space to flow at your own pace. Oh, I like that cancer. So I can't believe that there. <laughs> that may should be your title there, Cancer. I I I dig that, so I'm gonna leave that there. You stay mindful out there, Cancer. Keep your awareness about you. Keep eyes on the moon, feel her out there, Cancer, sense that energy. What are some things that you may need to let go of reflect on? Absolutely, you know, this hermit energy. And I will catch you on the next one tomorrow.